In this video, we're going to show you the site settings found within .NET Nuke 7. Now, in order to navigate to the site settings, we're going to go to the admin menu and choose the site settings option found on that basic settings tab. The site settings allow you to define a number of the settings for your website as you go through and create your first website in .NET Nuke. Now you can update these settings at any point in time, but it's not very common that you would need to come in and make too many changes to the site settings. Now we're going to go through the most important site settings here. There are a number of other site settings as well. Uh, you can find out some of the options for those within other videos in the .NET Nuke video library. The first area we find within the basic settings tab here is the site details. We can define a title for our website. You can see by default the title is my website. And that depends on which template you utilized when you created the website. Now the title will be used in a variety of locations. Most importantly it will be used in combination with the page titles or the page names to define that page title within the HTML content for your pages. So I would recommend that you put in information here that is relevant to the name of your business. We can also define a default description and default keywords for every page of our website. And whatever we define here within the description or the keywords will be visible on every page of the site that does not have its own description or keywords defined. After those two settings, we come across the copyright statement. Now here we can see there's a copyright and then a token called a year, and then the name of .NET New Corporation. Well, at this point, we can just change that to copyright awesome cycles for the fictional bicycle business. The year token will be replaced with the current year within every page of your website that utilizes the copyright skin object, and that's defined by the skin. After that, we get into a site marketing section. Now the site marketing section allows you to submit your website to search engines, submit your sitemap URL, and you can see that's a dynamically generated URL there. We can submit that to search engines as well. And if you're utilizing Google's Webmaster Tools and you need to go through the verification process, there's a verification option here. With, with that, you can type in or paste in the name of the page that Google tells you to create on your website to prove that you own the website. Paste that name in, click Create, and that would create that verifiable file for Google to be able to authorize you to utilize the Google Webmaster Tools for this website. After that, we have a banner setting, which controls where the skin object for banners gets its information from. Most sites are just going to leave that as none. After site marketing, we have an appearance option. Now, within the appearance option for the site settings, we can define the logo for our website. And to define the logo, we can either choose a file within the drop-down options here. We can actually drag and drop a file into the blue box, and that will upload a file that we can then use as our logo. Whatever logo we define there will be used within the skin object for logos defined by the .NET Nuke skin. From there, we have a body background option. You're typically not going to use that. Your background should be defined by your skin. And then we have a favicon.ico setting. If you want to customize the favicon, you can upload an ICO file here that will be used by .NET Nuke. Now a fav icon is the little graphic that shows up to the left of the URL here within Internet Explorer. It also shows up on the tab within Internet Explorer and other browsers that support tabs as well. From there, we have the ability to define the skin that's utilized on our website. Now, we'll cover skins in additional videos in the .NET Nuke video library, so check those out. But we have two settings here. We can define the site skin. We can define the edit skin. The site skin is the skin that will be applied to every page of our website unless we customize a skin at the page level, which we can do. We'll talk about that in our page settings video. We can also define the edit skin. Now the edit skin gets utilized in different modules within .NET Nuke that go into an edit interface. If you click on edit within an actions menu, some modules will open up the edit within a pop-up window. Other modules will actually change the URL. When that URL gets changed, that's where the edit skin will be utilized. So that's the basic settings here within the site settings page. If we go to the advanced settings tab, we'll find that there's a page management section. 
The page management section allows us to define a variety of different types of pages within our .NET Nuke installation. The two important ones that you're going to utilize are the home page and the login page. Now the thing to keep in mind when you're defining a specific page within page management, especially if you're defining the login page, if you're going to define a login page in .NET Nuke, you should make sure that you place the account login module on that page. Now, you don't have to define a login page within .NET Nuke. If you do not, .NET Nuke will apply the login module to whatever page a user is on when they click on the login link. After page management, we have some security settings here. We can define who the site administrator is. Now, this setting defines which user emails are sent from when a site or the website sends an email. Whatever the email address is attached to the user you select here in the drop down menu would be the email address that gets used for that website. Other than that, we're not defining anything specific about this user that's different than any other administrator on the website. It is possible to have multiple administrators within .NET Nuke. After that, we can define the time zone for the website. So I would go ahead and choose the time zone of wherever the server is where this website is hosted. There's a payment settings section here. If you want to charge people to have access to various sections of your website, you can utilize the payment settings. In the usability settings section here, we can go in and we can enable or disable pop-ups within .NET Nuke 7. We can also hide system folders, control how the, the control panel is working, the visibility of that control panel. Typically, you're not going to go through and change any of the settings here within the usability options. If you are logged in as a host or a super user, you'll find that there is a site aliases section here where we can go through and we can define the alias within our .NET Nuke website. Now an alias is the URL and that's how .NET Nuke tells which website out of all of the websites that .NET Nuke is hosting is being accessed and it can load the pages accordingly. After the site aliases, we have SSL settings, which allows us as a host or super user to define if this website should use HTTPS or SSL. You can go through and configure that if necessary. We can also control some of the settings for the messaging within our .NET Nuke website. We can throttle how many messages a user can send. We can also limit the number of recipients a user is able to send emails to or messages to. And from there, we can also enable profanity filters, allow attachments, and allow people to send those messages and those emails. In the host settings area, we can go through and for each particular website, we can define if there's an expiration date, if there's a charge for that website, the amount of space that website is able to utilize, how many pages or how many users they have within the .NET Nuke installation. And then finally, under the client resource management, as a host or an admin, we can actually go in and we can control whether or not the portal or this particular website is using client resource management. We'll talk more about client resource management within the host settings video in the .NET Nuke video library. Now, after the advanced settings tab, we do come across a user settings tab within .NET Nuke 7. We will talk more about that in other videos within the .NET Nuke video library, but we do want to go ahead and take a look at the style sheet editor, the fourth tab here on the site settings page. The style sheet editor allows us to get in and make changes to a file called portal.css. This is a CSS file that we can edit on the file system directly from here within the browser. It's very useful if you need to apply custom CSS to all pages of a website to be able to directly access that portal CSS file. Now, once you've made changes to your site settings, you should go down to the bottom of the page and click on update to save those site settings. Now, if you were making changes to the style sheet within the style sheet editor, you would click on the save style sheet option.